Hello everyone. Welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So today we have two syndromes. It is myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome or MPDS or burning mouth syndrome or BMS. So it's a continuation of our uh, various syndromes. Last three sessions we have covered various syndromes. So today's session also will be covering these two syndromes. Uh, there are actually various uh, various uh, syndromes present in our uh, oral pathology uh, subject but we are focusing only on the syndromes the main syndromes which have been asked for university exam so the idea is to give you some tips about each syndrome so you can easily memorize this and write it for the exam so let's see what is mpds and what is bms So we'll begin with burning mouth syndrome. It is a burning sensation without any detectable cause. So it is nothing but burning, painful or itching sensation located in oral mucosa. And the tongue is the most affected part followed by lips and palate. So it is a problem seen in oral cavity, especially the tongue, uh, lips and palate without any detectable cause that is burning mouth syndrome so usually we know ulcers and other lesions which causes burning sensation but this is without any particular cause so the clinically no apparent alterations are present in patient's mouth so what are the epidemiological features of this disease this is most commonly seen among women that is it is increased with age and it is like 6 is to 1 predilection compared to males that is female predilection is almost 6 times compared to the males and it is seen among women after menopause that is 3 to 12 years after menopause it is commonly seen and it is very rare before 30 years so that is uh, something related to the epidemiology of BMS. Now let's see the classification. So it is classified into three type 1, type 2 and type 3. It is based on the symptoms present when a person awake or, or upon waking. That is type 1. There is no symptom upon waking but it increases throughout the day. Type 2 is the symptoms present when upon aching and it is throughout the day it is present and this is the most common type that is type 2 type 3 there is no regular pattern and it is the least common one and let's see what are the etiological factors actually it is not confined to any particular factor we cannot say that this causes burning mouth syndrome there are many factors which can cause the burning sensation in mouth so those are we can uh, cl classify that into local and systemic factors the local factors involves uh, oral candidiasis lichen planus uh, allergy or uh, allergy lichen planus oral candidiasis and systemic uh, factors involves hormonal changes vitamin b12 uh, folic acid or iron deficiency Diabetes mellitus, uh, maybe the side effect of few medications, few autoimmune diseases and salivary gland disorders and some medications like AC inhibitors and even trauma and uh, psychiatric uh, problems. So local factors uh, like danger problems also could be there like ill-fitting uh, interincisal space and vertical dimension problems and maybe the uh, median rhomboid glossitis hypersensitivity to certain food materials uh, lichen planus I mentioned already and also oral habits like tongue thrusting and even carcinoma and maybe the prolonged use of chlorhexidine mouthwash also could be a etiological factor uh, some uh, disorders like uh, Sjogren's syndrome also could be a factor because it is uh, 
associated with the dry mouth and dry eyes so burning can be seen in these patients so uh, these are the uh, etiological factors associated with uh, burning mouth syndrome and what are the clinical features so co most common clinical feature is burning sensation uh, especially the anterior part of tongue and dyskusia and dysesthesia so that is dyskusia is the altered taste and dysesthesia is uh, itching or pain sensation and it is especially present on the anterior uh, one third of the tongue and what are the treatment options there is no uh, particular treatment options if it is a milder case uh, we can go for a uh, psychological counseling and uh, the moderate to severe cases should go for drug therapy like um, amitriptyline and alpha lipoic acid so burning mouth syndrome is uh, very peculiar because uh, we have many diseases many conditions many lesions which can result in burning mouth but without any specific cause without any clinical manifestation the presence of burning is actually known as burning mouth syndrome and it is most commonly seen with women especially post menopausal period and we have three classification and a n number of uh, etiological factors so now let's move on to myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome or mpds so it is a pain disorder which starts from trigger points in myofascial structures so what are these trigger points these trigger points are within the skeletal muscle which is triggered by macro or micro trauma happening to these skeletal structures so it is a pain disorder as the name suggests it is a pain disorder which is starting from few or many trigger points which is present in the myofascial structures so these trigger points are Uh, are elicited or responded by the macro or micro uh, micro trauma happening to these structures so it is uh, 30 percentage of the total population is affected and the females are most affected three is to one predilection and it is most commonly seen in middle age group that is 15 to 40 years so we have a cycle of events in this etiology so this is a cycle of events that is stress is causing muscular hyperactivity again the dental irritation is also causing muscular hyperactivity so what happens when there is hyperactivity of muscle the muscle fatigue so muscular fatigue which leads to myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome okay at the same time muscular over contraction can also leads to mpds muscular over extension can also leads to mpds so what happens due to mpds there is contracture there is degenerative arthritis there is internal derangement and there is occlusal disharmony so due to occlusal disharmony and internal derangement the chewing pattern is changed and also due to the degenerative arthritis and contracture the again the chewing pattern will be changed so chewing pattern is changed due to all these reasons that is mpds affect the degenerative arthritis it causes contracture it causes occlusal disharmony and it changes the internal structure that internal derangement so all these results in chewing pattern so what happens once the chewing pattern is changed it will again cause mpds so it is a vicious cycle okay so it starts with stress muscular muscular hyperactivity and dental irritation goes to muscle fatigue and muscular over contracture and muscular over extension mpds goes to arthritis internal derangement occlusal disharmony it results in chewing pattern it itself goes back to mpds so in pathophysiology what happens when the etiological factors so all the etiological factors 
which leads to micro or macro trauma to the musculoskeletal system to muscle spasm so all these etiological factors which causes trauma that is micro or macro trauma on the musculoskeletal system which leads to muscle spasm so what happens so this hypertonicity may lead to muscle fatigue so this is what i was uh, i'm explaining uh, hypertonicity there will be muscle fatigue and accumulation of lots of metabolic byproducts such as lactic acid prostaglandin bradykinins and histamines so due to this hypertonicity and muscle fatigue there will be byproducts that is metabolic byproducts such as lactic acid prostaglandin bradykinin and histamine so what happens the accumulation of these pain mediators lowers the pain threshold to mechanical and chemical stimuli which leads to mpds so it is a cycle etiological factors micro or macro trauma muscle spasm what happens then there is byproducts metabolic byproducts such as prostaglandin bradykinin histamine lactic acid which cause uh, pain threshold lowering the pain threshold to mechanical and chemical stimuli which leads to mpds so the classification uh, spasm of lateral pterygoid either uh, or uh, it is spasm of uh, elevator muscles or it is spasm of lateral pterygoid and elevator muscles so clinical features includes pain discomfort limited jaw movements uh, the clicking and other jaw noises and uh, tendon so in clinical features so there are basically uh, four categories so we can express these clinical features in four category that is neurologic otologic gastrointestinal tract and musculoskeletal in neurological there is tingling numbness blurred vision uh, and lacrimation in otologic tinnitus ear pain dizziness and vertigo in gi tract nausea vomiting uh, diarrhea or constipation musculoskeletal there is uh, fatigue tension tiredness weakness and joint pains so how do we diagnose mpds the most uh, common four criteria is the unilateral pain muscle tenderness the clicking and limited jaw movements so these are the four criteria for diagnosing mpds unilateral pain muscle tenderness clicking and limited jaw movements and how do we uh, treat this the treatment is basically uh, we go for 7 hours occlusal rehabilitation so it start with 7 hours so that is the first one is remove extraction of teeth second one is reshape grinding of uh, any occlusal high points or such things and reposition that is doing uh, using orthodontic treatment and restore any conservative filling or conservative treatment replace that is using processes reconstruct that is tmj surgery and the last one is regulate that is regulating the habits and symptoms so remove reshape reposition restore replace reconstruct and regulate extraction extraction grinding ortho treatment conservative treatment processes tmj surgery and control of habits that is 7 hours so 7 hours involved with this 7 7 hours involved with management of myofascial pain dysfunction so that's all about mpds so this isn't a complete uh, details of any uh, long essay this might be asked for a long essay but it is to give a very brief idea and uh, a, a pilot view so i i would say a pilot view that is uh, what are the basic features what are the striking features of any syndrome so you can easily build up the content while writing the exam so 
syndromes uh, we have completed uh, syndromes which are being asked mainly for university uh, papers so i'll come up with a different uh, topic in uh, oral pathology so hope you understood all the syndromes uh, we covered so far we co finished it in four sessions so anyway uh, i'll come up with new topics in uh, oral pathology thank you